In this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about role-based authentication in React, which is a very important concept. It's a very common use case to have in your application a certain part of it, a component, a root that is protected not only by the user being authenticated, but also that they have the correct role to be able to access that specific data. So that's exactly what we're going to be implementing in this video. But before we get into that, there's quickly two things that I want to mention. The first one is that I actually teach all of this and more in my course, Project React. If you like the way that I teach in my videos and you actually want to learn everything, literally everything there is to know about React in a super organized way using a custom application and a very unique approach that really hasn't been done before, definitely check out Project React. It's going to be linked in the description. I promise you, you are not going to regret it. And the second thing is that I also recently launched a newsletter that that's all about React. It's called Import React. I love the name. It's completely free and you get it delivered to your inbox every single week. You're also going to be able to find that in the description. Now let's get into the video. All right, cool. So let's begin. So over here, I have this auth.ts file. This is going to essentially serve as a mock backend, which we're going to use to implement our own authentication. We don't have a real backend. We don't need one for this video. This is going to be completely sufficient. So what we have here is we have a test user. It is of type user. It has an ID, it has an email and this role property. We're also going to be using this role to determine if they have the correct role to access a specific resource in our application. And then over here, we essentially have two functions, get user and login, they pretty much do the same thing. They actually have the same code, right? And they basically just await for one second, because again, there's no real backend. Then they generate this authentication token, which really is nothing special. It's just doing math.random. So nothing fancy there. And then returning a mock response, status code 200, the authentication token, and then the test user as the user object. That's it. And then over here in the main.tsx file, we're essentially using React router DOM because we're going to be implementing this as part of a separate route that we want to have protected and only allow a signed in user with the correct role to be able to access that route. So we have the setup code here for the router, and then we're using the router provider here and passing the router. Again, nothing fancy here. Now, the way that we're going to approach this, the way that we're going to approach role-based authentication is in two steps. We're first going to create the authentication setup. So using these actual functions to get the user and log in the user, and then we're going to be implementing the role-based stuff that actually checks the role and determines if the user is allowed to see this thing. So I'm going to come here in the sidebar. I'm going to go inside of SRC, create a new folder, call this components. Then inside of here, I'm going to do auth provider. And this is going to be a component that is responsible for handling the authentication, calling the backend with the correct user, and then providing the authenticated user to the rest of the application. And for this, we're going to be using the auth context API in React. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining to you how that works. If you want that, I have a whole separate video on it. I'm just going to directly implement it in a very simple but efficient way. So first, because we're working in TypeScript, we're going to want to define the actual type of our context. So I'm going to come here and do type auth context, and that is going to be equal to, and here we're going to put a couple of properties. First, we're going to put auth token, because remember this auth function over here actually returns an auth token. So we probably want to store that in the state of our auth provider. This one is going to be optional, and there's a reason why we put it optional. And then it's going to be of type string or null like this. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing with another property that we're going to call current user. And this is going to also be optional. And this one is going to be user, which we can import from type slash user or null as well. Now, the reason we're doing optional and then string or user in this case of the user and then null is because we want three different states. We want this state null over here is going to represent that we don't have a user. We checked and the user is not authenticated. So we're going to set it to null. Then this value over here, either the string or the actual user is going to represent the case where we checked and we actually have a user and we store it in a state, a user or a not token. And then this undefined over here, this optional is going to map to undefined. This is going to be our pending state. If we have undefined, it means that we're actually in the process of fetching the user and we don't yet know at this point in time if the user is authenticated or not. This is going to be important as we actually work and implement the rest of this video. And then we're just going to do two functions, one to log in the user and one to log out the user. And these functions are going to be pretty simple. So we're just going to do a handle login. This is going to be a function that takes in no arguments because this login function over here takes no arguments. We're not doing anything with like emails and passwords. That's not relevant for this video. What is relevant is the authentication and the role based and how we architect all of that. And this one is going to return a promise 
of type void. And we're going to do the same thing with a logout function, logout like this. And this is going to be the type of our actual auth context. So then here I'm going to do the context. I'm going to do const auth context equals create context and import this directly from React. We're going to pass it here our type auth context or undefined. And here we're going to initialize this to undefined like this. This is going to be our context. And then we can actually start creating our component to be able to access this context. So we can do export default function auth provider. This is going to be a component. And in here, we're just going to return auth context.provider. And we're going to put here, we're going to need to have some children because as a provider, we're going to need to wrap the children. So we're going to do children which we currently don't have in this component, but that is fine. Let me just, what happened? Let's do it again. Children like this, right? We don't have this in the component, but it's fine. We can just create some types over here. Type auth context auth provider props. And we can do props with children and import this directly from React and pass here our children and then auth provider props like this. And now we have access to our children over here. Great. We're one step closer. Then as we always do, we want to export also a custom hook to be able to use with this provider just to prevent the case where we're using something in this provider outside of the actual provider. So we're going to do export const use auth. And that is going to be an arrow function like this. And actually I'm going to do it as a function. Let's do function use auth just to make it consistent with everything else that is going to be a function and it is going to do const context equals use context we're going to pass it here the auth context like this then we're going to check over here if context is equal to undefined we're going to return we're going to throw an error so we're going to do error like this and we're going to do use auth must be used inside of a auth provider like this Otherwise, we're just going to return the context like this, right? This is pretty standard. Again, if this is unfamiliar, I have a whole tutorial video where we actually implement this context. And I actually explain to you why you need to create a hook like this in the first place. Then what we need to do is over here, we have a type error. We need to actually provide the value of our context, which is all of these properties over here, right? So let's do that. So first, let's start with the auth token and the current user. For that, we're just going to use a simple use state because that is going to be extremely sufficient. So we're going to do const auth token set auth token equals use state we're going to import this from react we are going to give this as a type we're going to do string and then null like this and we're going to define it initially as undefined right this is going to be string null and it's going to start off as undefined so this one has exactly the same type string null and then undefined we're fine we're going to then do the same thing with the current user const current user set current user equals use state and this one is going to be user or null like this, right? We're going to cancel the user over here. And we're also going to default this to undefined. So it's very important. They start off as undefined because initially we don't know if the user is authenticated or not. We're going to have to implement logic to change that state. But initially it is going to be undefined. Then once we figure it out, we're either going to put it as a string or null, or in the case of the current user as a user or null. And then we need two functions, handle login and handle logout. These will be pretty simple. We're just going to do handle function handle login. That is going to be a function. It takes no arguments. This should be actually an async function like this. And here we're just going to do try. And I'm going to try to call our API, our login function, and actually get the response. So we're going to do await login. And we're going to import this from API slash auth. It gets called with no arguments. We're going to then get the const response from away.login. And here we're going to do is we're going to destructure the response because remember the response is actually an array over here. So what we can do, let me see how did I do it here? Yeah, there you go. We're going to do const auth token user equals response and then one, right? We're not really concerned with the status code over here, at least in this example, we're just going to access the second parameter in this array, the second argument, and we're going to destructure it to access the auth user and then the user over here. And then once we have auth user and user, the only thing that we have to do is just set auth token. We're going to do auth token like this, and we're going to do set current user, and we're going to set it to user like this. Finally, because this is a try catch block, we need to implement the catch. We're going to do a catch. If we have an error for any sort of reason, we're just going to set auth token to null, and we're going to do set current user also to null like this.
Now, see, this is why we created our state as having three different properties, undefined by this optional question mark over here, and then string or null or user or null, right? Initially, our state over here starts off as undefined. Then we have this handle login function. We're going to make a request to our login function from our backend. We're going to get the actual values. And if everything is correct, we're going to be able to set in a state our auth token and our current user. If not, if we have an error for any reason, we're going to set this to null and set the current user to null. This is going to let the rest of our application know that we tried to actually get the authenticated status of a user and either it worked, so we have it in the state, or it didn't work and we have null, so we can react accordingly in the rest of our components. That's why we did this. And finally, we need one more function, async function. And actually, this doesn't even need to be async because we're not actually going to be calling anything. So just function like this, handle logout. And this takes no argument. And this is just going to take the same code over here and just set our auth token and our current user to null. Now, in a real application, you might want to actually send a request to the backend to log out the user. In our case, there's no need to. We don't even have a function for it because we're not actually doing anything. This is not a real backend. But keep in mind that in a real application, you might have to do this. But the concept is the same. You send a request to the backend. The backend says, OK, the user is logged out. And then here, what's important is that you set the state of React, the state of the front end of this provider, to actually null, to let the rest of the application know that the user is currently logged out and we know about it. And finally, we come here to this context provider, we do value, and then we pass it here an object, and we just do auth token, current user, handle login, handle logout. And now we have all of this here. What is the problem with this? Oh, this needs to be async because our type here, we said promise. Fine. Let's just put this async just to make TypeScript happy. There you go. We now have our context provider. We have all of these properties over here. And this component only handles authentication. Notice that there's nothing done with anything role-based and it just handles the authentication. And through this use auth custom hook, we're going to be able to use the authentication status in our components. That's good. Step one is done. Now, inside of the app.tsx file, this is our main component. We can actually use this custom hook and actually access some of the values and even some of the functions. So we're going to come here and we're going to do const and then we're going to do auth token to actually check if the user has a token or not, because we're not going to be using the user specifically. Handle login, handle log out. And we're going to make this equal to use auth like this. We're going to import this from our auth provider component. And now inside of this component, we have access to the auth token. We have the correct types over here. We have access to the functions so we can actually do stuff with them, right? So first, let's come here. Let's create a button. Let's do this on click. We're going to pass this handle login. And we're going to have this say login like this. But let's actually check for the auth token to only allow login if the user is not actually currently logged in. So we're going to come here. We're going to do auth token question mark. And then if the user, if we don't have an auth token, we're going to put handle login. Otherwise, we're going to put in here handle log out like this and here log out like this. Perfect. Now, if we actually go and check the browser, let's see. Oh, unexpected application error, use auth must be used inside of an auth provider. I actually forgot to do this. We forgot one step. We created this auth provider and see this is the benefit of using this hook because now we ran into this. We tried to use the context using this hook over here. It didn't work because I forgot to put the provider in our component in this main.tsx file. So let's do that. So here I'm just going to wrap the router provider with our auth provider. So we can do auth provider provider like this, import this, and then we're going to put our component inside. And now we should be good to go. There we go. We have cause and solutions. And then I can press login over here. It is going to wait for one second because our API simulates waiting for one second. And now, as you can see here, we have log out. We have an actual auth token. The only reason we're seeing log out over here is because inside of app.tsx, we're only seeing that if we have an auth token. So this proves to us that this auth provider component actually works and does exactly what it's supposed to. That's good. Now, let's Let's move on to the second step. Let's start implementing role-based authentication. So what I'm going to do here inside of this component is I'm going to create a link over here using React Router to a protected root that we're going to want to protect. So I'm going to do here link like this, import this from React Router DOM. And here I'm going to put it href, I believe it is, or path to actually it is. And we're going to put here slash protected. And here we're going to do as a link, we're going to do protected root like this, and we're going to close the link directly, right? So now we have a link to slash protected, and it says protected root, so, right? So if I see it, this is the link over here. Maybe we just want to actually do something like class name and then do flex call like this to make this call. And then we also need to put flex like this, right? To make these, there we go. 
And let's put, I mean, this is fine. This is okay for now. If we click here, protected root, we're actually gonna get an error because we haven't set up this root in our React Router. That's fine, we can just fix that real quick. We can come here to our main.tsx. Inside of here, we can do path like this. We can do slash protected. And then we can do as the element, we can do perhaps a div that says protected content like this, right? So now we can go back, we can go to protected root and we have protected content that although it says protected content is currently not being protected, that's left for us to actually implement. So how do we implement protected content on this specific root and also have it be configurable based on the actual role of the user, which remember gets here from this test user object. Well, to do that, we're gonna do something very similar that we did here in the auth provider, which is that we're gonna, we're gonna be creating a component that is only responsibility is to handle the protected root. And then we're gonna use that in here in our main.tsx. We're gonna wrap this object over here, this element here with that protected root, pass it some roles that we wanna have this be valid for, and then everything should work exactly as we expect. So let's do that. So I'm going to come here inside of the components folder that I just created, and I'm going to make a new component, call it protected root.tsx. And in here, we're going to do rjsfc. This is going to be our protected root component. So protected root component. And here we're going to do something cool. So we're first going to start by defining some types. So I'm going to do here type protected root props, and that is going to be first props with children. We're going to have this also accept children. And then we're going to extend this by also adding allowed roles and then question mark because this can be optional. We might want to protect the root without any specific roles. And here we're going to put user. We're going to import our user over here from our types. We're going to pass it here, the role property of the user. And then we're going to make this into an array because we actually want to allow an array of roles and check against that array of roles and see if the user's role is within that array. And then here inside of the protected root, we can come here, we can do auth allowed roles and we can do children and we can have this be of type protected root props like this. And now we have allowed roles and children and we can directly use it inside of this component. Now this component, as I mentioned, is going to need to know about the user, but its responsibility is not to handle anything related to authentication. Its only responsibility is to protect the root against a user and some allowed roles, right? That is its only responsibility. That means that in this component, we're gonna have to make use of this user over here of the state that we have in the auth provider through the custom use auth component, right? This is a great example of following the single responsibility principle in React, which is that you have two different components, they serve two different purposes, each one has its own purpose, and you use them together, you connect them together through something like a custom hook, and then you get the functionality of both components working really nicely together. So we can come here to protect the root, and we're going to do const user. And in this case, we're going to access the user because we're going to be needing to use the user and check the user's roles inside of this component. So that's going to be use auth. And we're going to import this also from the provider like so. So now we have the user over here. And if I hover over this, you're going to see that, hmm, what is the problem? Property user does not exist, right? Because we need the current user, not the user. There we go. Now, if I hover over this, you're going to see that user has three separate types. We have user, null, and undefined. That's great. That's exactly what we want. We need to handle each one of these specific types. So remember, undefined means that we haven't yet checked if the, if the user is authenticated or not. We're currently in the process of fetching. So that's our loading state, if you will. Null means that we tried to fetch, we got a response from the back end, and it was an error telling us that the user is not authenticated. So we also need to handle that. And finally, we need the user. If we have a user type, it means that we checked against the back end, the back end told us and gave us back a user, and the user is not authenticated inside of our application. So we also need to handle that. So first, let's do this one because it's pretty simple. If we have have a user and if we are authenticated, we're just going to return the children over here, right? Again, this component is going to receive children. If everything is fine, we're just going to return the children. And that is going to mean that you're allowed to see the actual content that is being protected by this component. Then the second one that we can do, it's also pretty simple. We can do the loading state. So we can check for undefined directly. So we can come here and do if user current user, sorry, equals, equals, equals undefined. Then we can just perhaps return and we can do div and here we can put loading dot 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 right we're loading we're in the loading state we don't yet know if the user is currently undefined or not authenticated or not sorry and finally we have our last case which is the null case which is when the user is not authenticated so what we can do is if current user equals 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 null so if we don't have a user or if and here i'm going to open a parenthesis or if we have allowed roles right so in this case the user might not be null but if we have allowed roles in this component and the allowed roles 
does not include the user.role, we're also going to check and say, let's say current user. Why do I keep writing user? Current user. There we go. Dot role. Then we're going to do here, we're going to return a div that says permission denied like this, right? So if the current user is null, which means if the user is not authenticated, or if the user is authenticated, but we have provided allowed roles in this component, and the allowed roles does not include the user's role, which means the user doesn't have the role that we provided here, we're going to return permission denied, you're not allowed to see the specific content. And really, that's it. We have our three cases, remember our three different types, user, null, undefined, we're checking against all of those, we have the loading state over here, we have our actual unauth unauthenticated role, either by the user not being authenticated at all, or they don't have the correct roles. And we also have the success case where we're rendering our children. This is all that we need to have a protected root component that is aware of the user's roles and protects the content based on that role or the user's authentication status. This is great. So now with this, the only thing that we need to do is come back here to our main component and just protect this content over here. So we can just do protected root, import this directly, we can pass our content inside. And here we can just do allowed roles. And let's say, for example, we only want to allow admin, which our current user, if I go back here to our API, it has the role of admin. So this should theoretically work. So let's see that. So in our component over here, as you can see, we're currently seeing the login button, which means we're not logged in. So let's press login. Let's wait for a second. Now it says log out, we are logged out. Now if I go here to protected root, you're going to see that we see our protected content, because our role matches and we are authenticated. This works. Great. Let's go back. Let's press log out. Now we're logged out. Let's go to protected root and it says permission denied. We're logged out and we don't have the correct roles. So this is actually showing us exactly what it should. Permission denied. We're not allowed to see the specific content. This is great and this works. Now there's a problem here. If I reload the page, so we're unprotected and then permission denied, if I reload the page, it's actually going to show loading because we don't yet know if the user is authenticated or not. And it's actually going to show this indefinitely because the only way for us to, so to show a authenticated user is if the user actually clicks the login function, where is it inside of our app component, there we go, is if the user actually clicks the login function. This is not a good user experience because on this screen, I don't even have a login button. This should be automatically handled by the backend, sorry, by the component to actually send a request to the backend to make that check for us automatically. So let's implement that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here to our auth provider, because this is the responsibility of the auth provider, because it is related to the authentication. What we want to do is instead of just only doing this on login, we also want to do this initially on mount of the component, we want to use the not the login function over here, but the get user function, which again, it does the same thing. But just imagine that it's two separate functions that do entirely different things, right? So we need to do that inside of this component. Now we could do this with React Query or some fancy data fetching solution, but we're not. This is a simple tutorial. We're just going to use use effect for this. That is going to be completely sufficient. So we're going to come here to use effect, import this from React, pass it here a function. We're going to pass it here an empty dependency array. This is not going to depend on anything. And inside of here, we're going to do literally the same code as this. We're just going to copy it. We're going to paste it inside. And here we're actually instead of login. So we're going to do get user. We're going to import this from API slash auth. And here we have an error that we're await cannot be used. That's because we just need to put this inside of a function. So we can do function, get user, actually fetch user, user, and then we're going to do it like this, we're going to put async in front. And in the body of the function, we're going to do this. And now we have our fetch user function, which we can call fetch user like this user like this, and we can fetch this directly on mount. Now we have the same code, we're calling the get user function, we're going to run this on mount automatically without having the user actually click handle login, this is going to be better. So now as you can see, going back to the application, we already see protected content because this fetch already happened. But if I just reload, so you can see it in real time, we have loading for one second, the request is happening. And then we have protected content because our user remember has the admin role. So we should be able to see this protected content. If however, I go back here to auth.api, and I change this from admin to viewer, for example, and then I reload, it's going to say loading and then permission denied, we fetch the user, I am authenticated, the request worked, there was no errors thrown, but I don't have the correct role. So this is going to say permission denied. Then if I go back here to the main.tsx and say that I want to also add here viewer. Now this is going to work because again, I have the correct role. 
protected content, right? So this is completely customizable based on the user. You just wrap every component that you want to have protected with this component. You pass it the allowed roles and then everything just works. You have a separate component. It's only doing one thing. It's really efficient. This is all the code required to just do that. And it just works. And then you have this auth provider component that is responsible for just the authentication. It's only responsibility. And this also just works. And you combine them together and you have something that is very efficient, simple to work on, and it just works and it's very secure. And really that's all that you need to have role-based authentication in your React applications. Now I will mention, going back here to the protected root component, I will mention that this is a very simplified version of a protected root component, but that's because the actual implementation of how you actually do this is going to differ based on the framework that you're using and based on the library that you're using and also your specific use case. Maybe you wanna actually redirect when loading. Maybe you actually wanna do this in another component. That's totally fine. Maybe if the user is unauthenticated, you wanna show something else, component, a button, redirect, right? I'm not the one to decide what you should do. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you have three different states, one for the user, one for the non-authenticated, and one for the undefined depending state, and that you handle each one of those states. That's the only thing that I care about, and that's the only thing that I want you to get out of this video. If you got that, I'm happy, you're happy, and you're now a much better React developer. So now what I would recommend that you do is you take this code, you'll be able to find the repository in the description, as is the case for pretty much all of my videos. Take this code, clone it on your machine, run it, and try to understand why we did each of the things that we did in this component. Why did we do it this way? Why not another way? Play around with this, get a feel for this, try to extend it if you will, see if it breaks somewhere and try to fix it. Because I promise you that is going to make you a better developer. And that is the only way that you're going to be able to become a great React developer that is capable of building really efficient code. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure to leave this video a big thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe or you can click here to watch a different video of mine that YouTube seems to think that you're really going to enjoy. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Kozden. This is Kozden Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.